So I walk out into the backyard and I see this big ugly penguin and immediately I know it's Otev. It's sort of like musical chairs where you can't be the last one to yada 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 blah. This is an example of a boring confessional that we hear roughly every single season and on a more basic level something we hear every single episode. Although Diary Room sessions have become more and more scripted, they are still one of the most integral parts of the show's success. Confessionals are the storyteller of the season. It's what drives and steers the episode, so based on that logic, a good season needs a good driver. So today, we'll be looking at those who have mastered the Diary Room and exploring the best confessionals of all time. But, guess what? There is over 40,000 confessionals in the US season alone, so I'm definitely going to miss a ton, and I ask that you please go easy on me if and when I miss a few of your favorites. This is definitely a more fun, laid-back video, so sit back, subscribe if you haven't, because it's easy to forget to subscribe, and once you've done all of that, enjoy the video. Before we begin, let me say that although most of the DRs in this video are on the funnier side of things, there are confessionals that are great because they're badass or emotionally powerful or whatever else that makes watching them an equally rewarding experience. So there will be a few on this list that falls into categories other than just funny. I was gonna start with Big Brother 1, but then I remembered that I'd literally never watched that season and I would feel disingenuous if I were to go and try to scrounge up some DRs and pretend that I loved them. So I'll just skip to Big Brother 2. This season brought us the first person to truly find the power of the diary room. Dr. Will Kirby realized that he didn't have to just answer his questions and move on with things. He understood that the diary room was the place where he could create his evil persona. He could laugh and make jokes at the other house guests' expense, and he could connect one-on-one -on -one with all of America and make it feel like they're all in on the joke. Will has had so many S-tier confessionals, and he really set the standard for what could be done in the diary room. She has one eye that's a piercing eye. It's used mainly for finding dirty towels on the floor. Um, also, it's used to find kids who are having a good time and to yell at them. Pick up your towels. No one's allowed to talk. I'm freaking out about everything. Will, don't have any fun. Don't have any fun. Don't have any fun. These arts and crafts are full. I hate them. I'm not doing them. I'm way too advanced for this. I'm not doing anything. Ah. I was considering uh, donating um, this trip to someone else in the house who, you know, who has, you know, been a little more depressed lately, like Nicole. Just kidding! I'm keeping this and there's no way I'm letting anyone else use it. Of course I want to ride an helicopter and no one can take this from me. You know, I really try to teach everyone the deep, dark, dankest dungeon that I call my own heart. That's what I'm just trying to explain. And uh, they just won't pay attention. I tell them right to their face, I'm gonna stab you in the back. I'm gonna lie to you. That's what I've been doing. I'm gonna continue to do it. Goodness. I Some told goodness. everyone that I created the fast for spiritual cleansing, which was total BS. It puts me in a position of power, and if people are wondering what I think, then I have some ability to control them. I can be the puppeteer, and they can be the marionettes. I consider her to be a sister. Uh, a hot sister who I'm trying to hook up with, but a sister nonetheless. In the following season, Big Brother 3, we had some pretty funny confessionals from most house guests. Danielle, Jason, Amy, Marcellus, etc. Big Brother 3 was sort of the start where everyone was finding their tune in the diver room, and I think it really worked out because there's some funny confessionals. And Eric, I'm Big Stuff Man, love me because I have rippling muscles. And oh, Danielle, I can give women three to four orgasms. I'm like, whatever. Whoopie doopie on a poopy. Who cares? Josh is the most un sexiest man I ever met in my life. Come on, people, did you not see the shorts? I mean, Tanya is like boobs, 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 and boobs, you know? My husband better be working out. He better take a lot of vitamins because I'm gonna need a lot of attention. A lot. <laughs> I'm staring at her. <laughs> who's, who's gonna win? Everybody's like, mm, I'm not gonna say anything. Y'all know I'm gonna win. <laughs> I could find some other guy and hang out and do something manly like lift weights in the backyard or spit. We do have him running around the house. Apple juice on the rocks. If Jason messes up or if, if he makes us mad, he goes into the speedo. There were no negative aspects to Islam. I got to stand next to Jason. I got to show my ass on nationwide television, which is sort of liberating. This is one of my favorite activities on the face of the earth. I love looking at myself. I am never, ever, ever disappointed. Guess what? Big Brother 4 had some funny ass dining room sessions. It was pretty good. Nathan is just somebody that I am flirting with to win $500,000. Nathan might be the biggest meathead I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> Allison's bringing back the women's movement like 40, 50 years. <laughs> Ali cries on cue. I had to win the head of household competition today. Losing was not an option for me. There's a new bitch in town. 
Did I mention that the psycho crazy bitch has head of household? I almost wanted to hear people say, so and so you are safe, especially to the people that they didn't want to say it to. Justin, you're safe. I had David tell Justin he was safe. Nathan, you're safe. It was a bit painful, but I was a bit also uh, a bit drunk, I think, at the time. I don't particularly like G's tattoo. To me, a really nice tattoo would be, say, a uh, Tweety Bird on your ass. I think people that don't have tattoos uh, don't have identity. They don't have the balls enough to, to do something like that. I, I would never get a tattoo. I usually arrest people with tattoos. Unfortunately, I found that Big Brother 5 mostly had boring confessionals. So here's one clip of Cowboy Crying that I found powerful, but otherwise I got nothing. As you can see, God, this really means a lot to me. Big Brother 6, aside from being one of the best seasons of all time, gives us one of the goofiest players ever who was mighty okay with holding nothing back in the diary room, and that's Big Boy Howie. We had never seen anyone like Howie before, and to this day we haven't had anyone match his level of whatever the heck he is. He's hilarious and gave us some confessional gold. Also, we had the likes of Kaser, Janelle, and James giving some pretty great diary room sessions too. People ask me all the time, Howie, are you Jewish? Are you Catholic? Are you Christian? Are you Protestant? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I'll simply let them know. I'm a Jedi. If it came between my Jedi art and having to make love to a woman, I got right to the dark side. The objective is I want to rip the friendship apart psychologically and mentally. April's an emotional, dumb player. And that right there, you know, lets me know that I can reach her emotionally because she's so stupid. I want to say congratulations to me. You know, Howie, you know, great looking guy, finally amounted to something in the Big Brother Six house. Ah, again. He won it again, he didn't even win it. We freaking gave it to him. What the hell happened today at a lot of piñata? There wasn't a lot of thinking going on, was there? I plan on being around to the end because they make dumber mistakes than I do. I got a couple more weeks to stay here. Because, you know, I thought I was going to get uh, maybe some sleeping time or some massage time with Sarah, if you know what I mean. And now that her boyfriend's here, I guess that's kind of out of the question. The sight of Janelle just ruins my day. What? You vote Rachel out. But Big Fat Maggie wouldn't, uh, wouldn't swear to her Bible. I won't swear on the Bible for anything. Because I'm a lying sack of garbage around here, and you know it, and I know it. Sad, I didn't want to see your guy love her. Lover as a person, as a friend, as a future hookup. What's lucky for us confessional lovers is that all of those people that were great in season six came back for season seven to deliver some more great diary room sessions. And we also got the best duo tandem the DR has ever seen, the Chill Town phone calls. At the time, these were the cream of the crop, best DRs people had ever seen. Well, I'm assuming. I was only six at the time. But in terms of being iconic, this was definitely as good as it got during the time period. And just overall, there were some really, really good confessionals from the entire cast of All Stars. There is something that is appealing about every man in this house. Jace, I'd kiss. But at this stage in the game, I'd kiss Chicken George. No, I could never be that desperate. But I would kiss Kaser. Good God in heaven. Normally having two brain cells is enough to survive in life, but eventually Howie's brain cells start arguing with each other and uh, they just shut down. <laughs> Howie and I have one thing in common. We're both attracted to me. James thinks the show is fixed in Janelle's favor. Well, it is. I'm the one fixing it, James. Will's nominated. He needs his fortitude. He needs to dig deep, try to save himself. He goes out first thing because he can't eat a little slop. Will's a wimp. This bitch took the doll out of my hand. James is really upset at me. I can't believe that just happened. We fought over a freaking doll. It's James' contention that he and Janelle came to a doll at the exact same time, and Janelle kicked him and bit him and punched him in the face and pulled one of his eyes out, and then she went and got some pliers and yanked out one of his wisdom teeth. The way I saw it, she just whooped his ass. Howie, that man could eat some food. Howie's caloric intake exceeds that of any human. It's on the level of a hippopotamus. One day I realized he's not a small boy. Howie's the big boy. Howie's big boy. Hello? Will? Yeah. Hey, it's Boogie. Hey. Check this out. Let me hear. So I'm at the nomination ceremony, uh -huh. and Kaser put both our keys in the box. <laughs> <laughs> big Brother All-Stars, I go in front of the entire house guest group, and I say, I hate you all. 
No one voted even against me. Everyone voted against Jace. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to the veto ceremony, right? I veto myself off the block, obviously. Naturally. So I think they're about to call your name. They are. <laughs> Janelle puts Diane up. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get these fools a blindfold because they're in the dark. They are in the Nah. I want a trip to Aruba for two in a plasma television. Did you win POV? No, I won uh, 5,000 bucks. <laughs> Bring. Bring. The next stretch of seasons were pretty medium in terms of confessionals. Big Brother 8 had some good DRs from Eric Stein as well as some good ones featuring the father-daughter duo of Dick and Danielle. Big Brother 9 had some wild contestants, which did make for some funny DRs. Big Brother 10 had some great charismatic sessions from Dan as well as some generally good ones from the likes of Libra, Keisha, even Jesse. And Big Brother 11 had some cheeky confessionals from Kevin, Russell, Casey, and even Jeff and Jordan. Overall, nothing stood out to me as too great, but still good enough for a long montage. I've never taken a worse picture. It's horrible. Streaming down her face as if, like, somebody had died or something. But no, it was a photo. I love my photo, by the way. What a brilliant technicality to bring into the mix to make the person who is the biggest idiot and guesses the lowest freaking number because they're a moron and have no spatial perception wins the HOH competition. Oh, that selfishness, you know? And Jamika, Jamika, Jamika could have took the $5,000, but she did it. Oh my goodness, this is a shocker. America loves me. This is unbelievable. Jen. Oh my god, this is the best day ever. She's letting me be her dad. I think the times and the moments that we're sharing now, fixing this relationship and putting it back where it should be, is without a doubt worth way more than the money. Who said all the damn baby food out here, bro? I like it and all, but not that much. Is that my mother saying? Tell her I need to talk to her immediately because she didn't do a good job at all. I, I mean, it's good for you. It's healthy. I like the banana one. That's about it. And the, and the, and the vanilla custard's all right, too. He's just so not my type. And I do have a type. I like tall, dark, and handsome. Sheila, you've been matched with Adam. Absolutely, like, no personality, no joking. Like, deathly afraid to even be near me. I mean, she's busted and beat up anyway, you know? She's looking to go off on her and her face and tell her how it is. There's a lot of people that don't like Natalie. I'm one of them. Oh, yeah, Le or Keisha. Keisha, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. One of my naps finally paid off. How did everybody make out and I got the shaft? $10,000 and this is what I get? Leotard? After everybody gets good, I get a Leotard by a mother who should get her kids taken away because she's a f***ing horse slut. I was smiling from ear to ear. Put me in a bright white commercial, honey, because I was glad to see him hit the road. Peace out. Deuce. Shake him till you bake him. In the kitchen, there was so much tension. If you tried to cut it with a knife, the knife would break. I just tried to look at the floor and not make eye contact. I thought they could have killed me with their looks. I don't know if things in this house can get any... Any, any better for me. This is incredible. This is the one thing that I could have asked for. Jerry has called me out in front of everyone and it's created so much sympathy for me, I can't even contain it. Ooh. Walking into the Big Brother house, I was like, wow, this place is super delicious. You know, words can't explain it. It was super Powell Al delicious. Bam. B and A, and I'm thinking it's an H. What, what is, what is B, A, H? Bahamas. Oh man, I'm happy. The envelope contains a banana soup. Congratulations, Jeff. You have been selected by America to receive this special mystery power. The power of what? <gasps> coup de, coup de ta? Lately, Jeff has been really stressed out and he's been kind of snappy with me. I guess he thinks that I'm not pulling my weight. I don't like this Jeff. I like the other Jeff. My word means nothing in this game. So I will swear up and down, left and right. At this point, all that matters is getting Natalie to fall so I can get to the third phase, win the HOH, and boot this biznatch out of this house.
After that semi-long stretch of seasons, Big Brother 12 gives us a big gift of characters. The season itself may have not been the most exciting gameplay-wise, but the personalities of Rachel, Enzo, Lane, Reagan, Matt, and so many others brought some life into the DR. But the queen of confessionals, probably the greatest of all time, is Brittany Haynes, who never failed to keep it real in the DR, bringing laughs to us all with her witty and sometimes dark humor, typically at the expense of other house guests. She was so entertaining that it not only won her America's favorite player, but it also won her a ticket back to the Big Brother house in season 14. She's definitely one of my personal favorites in the diary room, and for good reason. I lost my dignity on a slippery wiener. Rachel was dying to spell a word that had to do with science because, you know, she considers herself to be, like, some sort of brilliant scientist, in case you weren't aware. Please. She makes her money right here. I'm so pissed right now. We were so freaking close, and we let some idiot who wasn't even smart enough to put on pants before the competition win. I don't like Rachel. But my initial reaction was to punch her in the face, but obviously I couldn't do that, so I refrained. We formed this, you know, alliance called the Brigade, and I have no clue what a brigade is. I am so gonna miss sitting in the backyard and talking with you about how high waisted Kristen's pants are, <laughs> and how spanky Rachel's dressing every day, and how annoying her laugh is. And it was fantastic. I just bought a ticket, I'm front row, and I want some popcorn, I want a Coke, I want to shh the guy next to me because I want to see everything happen. I'm taking my time on this one. Oh, on this one? Oh, you're gonna take your time on this one. Okay, just take it slow, Kathy, because this isn't a race or anything. No problem. <laughs> Chum does smell, but it's not as bad as I thought it was. I thought it was going to smell worse, so I, I'm not too, you know, appalled by the smell. Buzzard rang, and I turned around, and I seen Hayden jumping up and down. I was like, that's my boy. That's my boy. I know him. Me and him are friends. Come clap my hand. Let's make sure we're still friends, Hayden. Come on, come on. Boom. Maybe I'm just misremembering, but I don't remember many great confessionals from Big Brother 13. It's one of those seasons that I'm probably the least informed on, but in post-production, I may find a few good ones to throw in there, so it'll be a surprise to both myself and all of you if anything comes next. I'm throwing the veto, and Keith has no idea. I'm throwing this veto. Portia has no idea. I do not trust my partner. I'm going to make it look like I'm trying my best, but uh-uh. I am ready to get rid of my partner. Cha-ching! Jordan, you're not picking me to go to the screening, and I'm the HOH. What is going on in your head, girl? I did want to take uh, Brendan and Rachel, just because they would probably be, like, kissing the whole time, so I didn't want to listen to that. LaJuan is on the block, and I love it! Love it! If I do get voted out of the house, I have a 99% chance of coming back into the game with superpowers. Luckily, after a subpar confessional season with Big Brother 13, we get to move on to Big Brother 14, which gives us the confessional goat, Brittany Haynes, once again, as well as little bits of Janelle and Boogie, some pretty loud confessionals with Chef Joe, and some pretty fun ones with Ian. We also get to see Dan again, and Dan's excitement with himself every time he would pull off a huge move was always a treat to watch. And overall, I think that Big Brother 14 is one of the best confessional seasons. Ian first came to me and said he wanted to go out on a date with Ashley here in the Big Brother house. He doesn't have a chance with that girl. Not a foreseeable circumstance. Okay, not a good enough answer for me. Um, uh, I was just looking for a no. Ring, ring. What is this telephone doing in the DR? Hello? Oh, hey, Janelle. No, my boogie's actually not here, but I was just leaving a message for him. Is there anything you'd like to say? Jen just used a veto on me. Do you understand what just happened? My crazy plan worked, and I'm in this house to stay. People thought I was dead. Guess what? I'm back stronger than ever, and you can't stop me. When I told Danielle I missed her because she was gone all day with Shane, did I mean that? Eh, maybe, maybe not. I just really wanted to make sure our final two deal was still good. Look, I'm going to say it straight up with you. 
I didn't find any good DRs in Big Brother 15. The only one I remember enjoying was one of everyone being stoked that Andy won HOH, and they did some fun little editing with it. But outside of that, nothing stood out to me. Similar to Big Brother 13, though, maybe I'll find some good ones in post-production to put here. I feel cool with Andy winning this HOH. You know, we've got a good relationship, so I should be safe. I'm really happy that Andy won HOH. Andy and I jive very well together. I feel more than comfortable that Andy won HOH. This could be the best possible scenario. All right. Big Brother 16 had some solid characters, but let's cut to the chase. Zach Rance owned the diary room, and regardless of your opinions on him nowadays, he was 1000% part of the reason why Big Brother 16 did so well with the casual audience. I don't even feel like talking about anyone else's confessionals because all of my fond memories of the season, outside of Donnie, came from Zach in the diary room. In my opinion, he's in my top three all-time confessionalist, and he's got a lot of footage I can get through. I am not gay. <laughs> But the bond that Frankie and I have is so genuine and sincere that I truly feel like he is my boyfriend. I've seen these before. Brittany, oh, thank God you're walking out the door. It was better for my game to make sure you were gone. You were a great person and we became kind of friends. However, if I never see you again, I don't really care. I'm sitting on the block. Yes, I got beautiful hair. But I'd shave my head, armpits, legs, and toes to not be on the block this week. I have no idea what the puzzle says, but I'm gonna ring in as fast as I can, and if I win, I win. I got a 50% chance, so uh, I'm gonna roll with it. This guy already won fan favorite. He's donating the money to kids in Africa. Why the f isn't he not gonna win? Give him the money. I'm wasting my time right now. So here it is, boys and girls. The golden power of Vito. When Zack Attack needed it, he got it. it. Oh. I marry this thing. Oh, I have no chance. I have no chance. This kid's playing for children in Africa. What? Wouldn't he win? In a rare occurrence, we got a diver room king in back-to-back -back seasons, as Big Brother 17 brought us Johnny Mac, whose entire personality resonated so well in the diary room. And God, I don't know what to say other than he was just so funny. He's also in my top three all-time for DR sessions. Outside of Johnny Mac, though, we also have a bunch of great confessionalists. We have the start of Devon. We have Meg. James was funny at times, and so was Steve. Becky and Vanessa even gave us a couple good ones. So overall, BB17 had some good sessions across the board. I need to pick Jason. I know if I pick Jason, Jason is gonna bust his butt out here to try to win this veto. I picked damn Steve. Clay's talking to me, he's like, John Mack, what I'm gonna need you to do now, I, I know it's putting a lot on you, but you can't use that veto, you gotta stay on the block. I'm like, dude, no, why would I do that? I'm ticked off being nominated for a third time because I wasn't the first picture up, that is my spot. Why would anyone try to take that spot away from me? It's rude. I wake up. Hey, John, guess what? You're nominated! Yay! And you have to throw the battle of the block! Awesome! And you have to try to win the vetoes to save yourself. We're like, okay! Buddy, how's it been? I haven't seen you in, like, a week. It's been pretty good, John. I'm the power of veto. I do whatever the hell I want. So now I've been nominated four out of four times, and this is amazing! I, I'm really good at this. Like, if the game was called Get Nominated, I'd be winning right now. This sucks. I'm supposed to be the runner here, and I got beat by Steve, the kid that should be at Mathletes right now. Does Becky even know that we're in Big Brother? Like, what the? She doesn't want to talk about deals? Like, what is what? The only psychology that works on Vanessa is reverse, 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 reverse psychology. It's gonna start this weird cycle in her head, and her gears are gonna get stuck together and be like, lo, 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 lo. and hopefully her head explodes and. Uh, somehow I'm safe this week. <laughs> Big Brother 18, Over the Top, and 19 I'm just going to lump together because there weren't any super standouts. Paul was funny sometimes, Shelby was funny sometimes as well, but I won't lie to you, I remember very little from Over the Top. Devon was pretty solid, I love Josh. Cody was actually quite amusing in the DR, but in the end I never found myself on the edge of my seat waiting for any specific someone to walk into the diary room. So for that, I'm trying to breeze my way through these seasons. I told myself from that I would come in here and be emotionless. Like God. Nicole, you didn't learn from Hayden? Are you serious? Now you're up Corey's ass? 
I hope it's a double eviction so I just go home. Because <laughs> I'm going home. Because I'm next to Chrissy. And no one's going to vote on Chrissy because everybody wants somebody they can win against in the finale. And then I'm going to just be locked in a hotel room by myself, probably crying like I'm about to right now. So I'm going to go before I start. <laughs> so Kevin has been evicted. And that means one thing, baby. I'm in final three. Final three. This is the best feeling in the world. <laughs> you all played yourselves. Oh my God. <laughs> This is awesome! This is <laughs> Breaks my heart. <laughs> Season 19 has the weakest dudes I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> Big Brother 20 is probably my favorite season in terms of the personalities, but the person I by far found the funniest was Brett. The DR segments switching back and forth between Brett and Rockstar were hilarious. Brett's talk about defense winning championships is top notch, and overall, he was just so funny to me. Everyone else was so good too, and I'm sure there's a few others that I'll include when I show you the clips right now. My strategy is to make it as difficult as humanly possible to find my folder. I decide to take the biggest objects possible and stack them on top of my folder. Guess what, mattresses? You're coming with me. The only thing that wins national championships is defense, and that's what I came here to do. What's underneath Brett's barricade of mattresses? You'll never get this. Stay out of there! None of your business, buddy! This place is a natural disaster, and all I'm thinking is that Sam is gonna kill all of us. The only thing better than six mattresses is six more couches. Guess what, couches? You're coming with me, and you're gonna cover up my little dossier. I haven't even checked if it's still there, but I'm assuming it is. Scotty just found his second folder, and this isn't good. It's time to kick it into overdrive and win this Vita. I'm not going anywhere. They call me El Cockroach. I'm staying in this house forever. Even after the game, I'm gonna live here. Boom, let's go. That's one on the board for Fessy. Who said you gotta be a nerd to crack into these computers? Why the f is this rich boy calling me out? I'm just out here trying to like make some money for my family. The more you cry, the more I want you out of the game, to be honest. If I walk out this door and I take a right, and then I take two left and another right and walk down the hall through another door. I'm outside. That's cute. That's real cute. Like, why don't you go, like, mind your... I mean, like... <laughs> I promise you I will win the mental warfare and you will end crying and I won't. On my daughter's birthday. Maybe this is the lazy way out, but I'm just going to lump the last three seasons of Big Brother into one clump, because I feel that most confessionals still feel scripted, and I don't feel like going in-depth talking about these seasons. There were definitely good moments, and that's what I'll show you, but in general, I feel like we need to go back to raw, true confessionals in order to grasp some of the magic that the diary room used to bring us. Part two is now to figure out who saved me so that the house will never suspect it was me who saved myself. Like, no, David, I should not do that. You did. Did you, did you use the power on me? Did you? No. <laughs> you're not fooling me. I don't think you're fooling anybody in this house. Like, David, you use the power on yourself. Who ain't nobody in here trying to save you? I was about to give you an Oscar, but this whole telenovela he's doing right now, I don't understand what the end game is. This was a bragging moment for you. It's like, come on. You're being weird. In on you. But here's Enzo, no bathroom etiquette. He's going to stay quiet when you knock, call out, or anything. Like, why are you letting people walk in on you? I'm about to go to sleep. Not gonna do the things that fans expect and nominate the usual suspects. I'm about to shake things up. Hella blows being up on the block. Ultimately, it proves that Fritchie's a little snaky boy. He doesn't always mean what he says. Uh, he's not really a man of his word. Now that my target, Travis, is on the block, this HOH has been a total, total success. I can't be more ecstatic. Woo! I tell you what, I'm something else. So at this point, I shouldn't even be a flight attendant. I should become an accountant because I'm absolutely crushing these numbers. Sorry, Brent, you're going home. But of course, can't let you know that. Of all the people who could have won HOH, Sarah Beth was my last, the least person in all my life that I wanted to win HOH this week. I wanted.
Shout out to PHOY for Sarah Beth on the block! And there we go. The flow of this video is probably a lot different than my normal ones, but that's because I mostly wanted to step back and let the confessionals speak for themselves. There really isn't that much for me to analyze about them. They're just funny or powerful or badass, and I think it's important that we try and appreciate all the different aspects of Big Brother because regardless of if you're a fan of the gameplay, the drama, the laughs, or whatever, Big Brother is a culmination of all of that. And that's what makes the show what it is. The weird show that I'm embarrassed to show my friends at times because it can be way too wacky for my own liking, yet I still can't get enough of it. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you're new here and you got to this point, chances are that you'll be interested in some of my other videos. So it would be pretty awesome if you checked out some of those and maybe even subscribe to this channel. And as always, Here's a clip for you on your way out. In the BB All-Star house, we now have a bidet in the bathroom. A bidet is kind of like a windshield wiper, you know what I mean? To clean up after you did your, you know, your duties or your duty.